Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID, used to be called Multiple Personality Disorder. One body hosts a system of different personalities known as alters. They can be male or female, young or old, and have accents from all over the world. 24-year-old Jade is currently in the process of being formally diagnosed with DID, although she has always been aware that she was different. I think this is Sarah's favourite place to come to. She's a 16-year-old alter that likes makeup and photography. She comes here and takes pictures of like the baby ducks and the baby swans and stuff like that. Um, but the littles like it here as well and feed the ducks and. Who are the littles? There's quite a few of them. They're all different in their own way, but they like the childish stuff. Um, they are basically a child in an adult's body. DID is developed in childhood due to trauma. Your core state splits off and compartmentalizes. In essence, you get one body, but multiple people. I noticed differences when I was around six or seven. Um, I realised I had these imaginary friends. Then when I became a teenager, I realised that most people didn't have these people that took over their body. And I realised that then it would be a disorder rather than something that was normal, because for me it felt normal. Peg, come on. How many alters do you have, Jess? Um, I have around 26. Um, it's difficult to tell sometimes because I get amnesia with some of them. Um, so some of them I don't even know exist, but I've heard the others talk about them. You're never alone. You've grown up with these people with you and they understand you on a level that no one else can understand you. It does disrupt your life a lot. But at the same time, it's all I've known. It's either a disorder that's kept secret or it's a disorder that's then stigmatised and people get called serial killers and murderers and no one actually understands that they're normal people. They've just had bad stuff that's happened that's caused this and they're just trying to get on as much as possible. Twenty-seven-year-old Kai, from South Wales, has more than 400 personalities. And 26-year-old partner Franz has at least 40. And today, alters Blake and Grey are out shopping. We got the shopping list. <laughs> shopping lists are an important part of DID shopping. Otherwise, you just get everything or nothing. What's the worst that can happen in there? We'll spend too much money and we'll get nothing but Haribo. Children have no sense of health or money. <laughs> With dozens of personalities to satisfy, including child alters known as littles, keeping everyone happy is no easy task. Like, even though we, we have a list and it's tech, it, this should be the plan, but it's, but it's no. just not. No. <laughs> um. it's, it's difficult, like, we've got so many people that are just like, I want this, I want this, I want this, and I'm just like, there's only so many meals we can actually make in time. There's only so much time. money we can. <laughs> there's only so much money we've got. Yay. Imagine every time you went shopping, you had like a little entourage of people going, no, yes. No. <laughs> How many people does it feel like you're shopping for? A thousand. So many. A thousand. Because we've got to, we've got to friggin' take everyone's taste into account. Temptation well, can cause different personalities to emerge, especially the young ones. Zach wants <laughs> pot noodles, but we're not getting pot noodles because that's gross. We are not getting pot noodles. Don't so. go down that aisle, it's full of sweets. <laughs> <laughs> Someone wants cherry aid. Someone cannot have cherry aid. And it's soon an internal <laughs> battle between grown up and child. Xander is that close and is wanting 
to go back down that aisle and get things. Bad, unhealthy, gross things. New York cheesecake Kit Kat. <laughs> That's what he wants. <sighs> nah. It's fine, we don't need to get anything. Just like, focus on something boring and adulty. Sander, come on. One of Franz's child alters, Xander, has come to the front and pester power kicks in. Like, yeah, Xander is asking, is it okay if he goes in and gets something small? You put me in a complicated position. So we, no, it's, no, it's no, a it's... more, you put me in a complicated position purely because we now have a little around. I'm sorry. It's uh, okay. You <laughs> so, guys too. Yeah. Small chocolate bar. Thank you so, so much. Have a well, goodbye again, and yep. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful yep. day. Bye bye. Bye. I've got a chocolate pot. Oh, here we go. Never mind. <laughs> um, I'm Shade. I'm seven, and I'm out because Xander got this for me. I'm Damo. I'm 27. Okay. I'm out because this little one's out. Um, dad mode kicked in, so I'm now protecting. Plus, my kid is also around, so I've got a double dad mode. <laughs> All of the alters yeah. have their yeah. own memories yeah. and experiences. Where are you from, Shade? Uh, York. <laughs> it's fine, I forgive you because you're adorable. Oh. Are you tired? Yeah. You are tired. You need to go back in for a bit. The right people don't always come out, and that's a problem. So the future is hopefully just being able to function a little easier in normal situations. <laughs>27 year old Stacy was diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder, or DID, seven years ago. But she's lived with her system of multiple personalities called alters since she was a child. Who are you? Uh, Stacy. Describe yourself. <laughs> I'm Stacy. Um, I would probably what they would refer to as being the core, which um, for people that don't know systems, is you are the, that's so hard not to offend people, but the person that was born originally um, so uh, oh god that's such an awkward question to ask like I find it hard to describe that um, you find it hard to describe yourself yeah because if you say like I'm the core born one you can offend other alters theoretically they were born at the same time as me um, it's just my personality didn't fuse together properly the, the easiest way to say it so people understand is multiple personality disorder because everybody knows that, that reference, that name. Stacy lives with her wife, Nicola, who knows how misrepresented and stigmatised DID can be. We had one friend, actually, that said, well, you're a crazy psychotic murderer, which wasn't a nice thing for Stacy to hear. We just told them about her DID, and apparently she thought it was true because she saw it on, I think it was Law & Order, so it must be true. Needless to say that we're not, they're not friends anymore. <laughs> How many alters have you got? I've got 16 that I have managed to identify. Probably the one that most people meet is probably Zach. He's pretty much like a boy version of Stacey. He's the same age as me, he's 27. He's tall, dark haired, um, bright blue eyes. If I'm confronted with people and it's sort of an awkward, challenging situation, then he will front. And he's also a bit cheeky and a bit, bit sort of sexual, so if there's sort of sexual kind of conversation, then he'll, he'll tend to front. <laughs> it was a good few months um, after I met her, maybe about six months later. She just uh, told me, she just went, I've got dissociative identity disorder. I was like, okay, what's that? <laughs> 
And then she showed me this documentary and I remember being like, um, how do they know when there's someone else out? And then now, it, like, it takes time, you know, straight away. But then once she told me about it, they all wanted to start saying hello and coming out and seeing me. Which alters of Stacey's system do you love? All of them. All of them. I can't, I can't pick. Wouldn't be fair, we're like a big family. Sort of just sharing your life with, with others, really. Um, there's never really a day that you're alone, but at the same time, it's also the weirdest, loneliest feeling in the world. You never know what's going to happen every day. It's exciting. You don't know what you're going to wake up to. You don't know what you're going to be doing. There's never a dull moment with this lot. What <laughs> <laughs> <Not> awful. <laughs> Like Stacy, Franz and Kai have both lived with a network of personalities called a system since childhood. You're subhuman and weird. They're now in a long-term relationship. <laughs> Today, Kai is Nick. How many alters have you got? Oh boy, um, I think our current count of how many alters are in our system is probably at about 400. <laughs> I'm Nick. I should probably have said that, actually. That's me. Um, I look after people. I'm 22, and I'm impulsive, obsessed with... Makeup. Makeup. Yes, I love makeup. It's so pretty. <laughs> and in Franz's system, Damo's out. Yeah, um, I'm Damien, um, also known as Damo. Um, I'm 27, and I am the social butterfly of the system, I guess. So we, we're, we're both good for the, like, start of this. Yeah. Other people will get Maybe. more comfortable after we've introduced everything, I think. Some of the alters are yet to decide whether they want to reveal themselves on camera. So are they deciding whether they, may, whether they meet us? Some people, like Theo, he'd probably really enjoy doing this kind of thing. He loves media stuff, so he's super into it. And I know Amy is a bit like, she's just watching to make sure, like, if she does come out, is she actually going to feel comfortable being near you? With different personalities ready to appear at any moment, even the simplest task can be extremely difficult for Jade. Just collecting a prescription from the pharmacy is made considerably harder by having DID. So yeah, you're going, going to get a prescription. How far away is it? It's two short bus journeys, um, so about 20 minutes away. Sometimes it has some difficulties with me because when I'm on the bus I tend to switch um, and then another auto would come out and do what they want to do rather than what I had planned. So sometimes I find myself going into town and shopping rather than just picking up the prescription and going home. Sometimes it's completely forgotten and then I've got to do it all again the next day instead. Here I don't mind it because it's nice and quiet. Um, I don't mind sitting here at the bus stop and just looking at the bushes and trees and stuff, watching the world go past. It's in busy areas that tend to make me worry because it, the busy areas cause me anxiety anyway, which will cause me to switch because I'm anxious. And you may be drawn nil, he says. Don't fuck about man. Anxiety can cause Jade to switch to an alternative personality, one better able to cope with stressful situations. A loud noise or someone shouting can be a trigger. I just spoke to you, you said you haven't done it. Oh, no way. Oh, no way. James. Sorry? James. Okay, why are you here? 
because the guy was shouting. So Jade got anxious. And I tend to try and reassure her as much as I can. I'm 24. I'm six foot two, blonde, blue eyes, um, kind of skinny. I tend to comfort more than protect. If the shouting had become like a physical threat, then Matt probably would have came out to protect us. Each altar has their own unique memories, which can lead to confusion when they first emerge. At first, when I got off the bus, I was a bit confused. I knew um, what we were doing today, but I didn't know at what stage we had got at. I didn't know if we had just got off the bus to get the bus home or if we were still going there or not. I don't remember this morning. Like, internally, Jade has told me what we're doing now, so I know what I'm up to. James. So you um, got the, the prescription, prescription. Yeah. 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 Sarah was about a bit in there because she saw some makeup she wanted, um, but she doesn't want to be on this, so she was kind of panicking a little bit. So when did you first appear in the system, James? Um, I'm one of the first, so Jade thinks around three, which sounds about right. I think she needed a bit of a brotherly figure in her life, which is what I seem to do for her. I think Jade's around a bit because I feel a bit of anxiety. Um, so I think Jade is close to maybe switching back now we're getting close to home. I think it might be Zach, actually. Yeah. 27-year-old yeah. Kai and 26-year-old Franz both have dozens of personalities clamouring for attention. Oh, it's so lovely in here. Oh, my gosh. So anything involving choice becomes a lot more difficult. Oh. I'm already getting overwhelmed. <laughs> Particularly when there's a treetop for grabs. Elliot really wants the honeycomb or the banana one. Shade wants a uh, chocoholic. Today, Kai's altar, River, um, is present. We're dealing with so many people requesting different flavours, so... And Franz is Maddox. There's a lot of, of chatter going on. Um, different people are sort of trying to compromise and talk and, and choose things. OK, we've, nar <laughs> we've narrowed it down. I think. Have you? Yeah, you no, no, I lied. No, we haven't. <laughs> Obviously, we can't just buy like five different types of ice cream. Or we'd feel awful if we did that. <laughs> I'm feeling very overwhelmed. I, I can't even focus for long enough to finish a sentence. OK. <laughs> Certain altars hold on to memories Obviously. of trauma so that others don't have to. And one of Franz's altars, Zach, has recently been dealing with memories from childhood. So he gets to choose. No, we'll get, we'll get the mint chocolate chip. It's decided, it's, that's what we decided on. That's okay. what we're gonna do. Zach's the one that's decided and he's, he's not feeling very okay right now. So we've just said, you know, it's probably best if we do something nice for him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, yeah. I'm Zach. <laughs> you are, you are lovely, thank you. You're welcome. I'm Zach, I'm 14, um, I'm from Newcastle, Newcastle upon Tyne. Um, what? Ashy's out now. Um, I'm Ashy, I'm 23, um, sort of the dad of the system, so because one of the kids wanted ice cream and so I can keep an eye on him, make sure we stay safe. Which kind of sucks because I don't even eat ice cream. This is bloody horrible. I've never been here, but it looks like, it looks like a proper little seaside town. 
I was going to read. Dog! Twenty-seven-year-old Stacy lives with sixteen alternative personalities, and they don't all share the same memories. Morning. Who are you? Uh, Zach. Hi. Uh, You're Zach. Uh, yeah, I've not met you guys. Hi. Yeah. Hi. How old are you, Zach? And can you describe yourself? Uh, twenty-seven, male, um, sexy. <laughs> yeah, you get to meet Zach today. Yeah. What's um your relationship with Zach? It's like a best friend. Like we're quite quite close. Stacy's my partner. I'm solely with Stacy. Zach will call me his wife and stuff, but we don't do anything. We don't have an intimate relationship, me and Nick. Like, I'll still joke him for it with her. So I treat her the same as I do all other females. He's a very flirty guy. Uh, he likes to joke. He's, he just likes to have a good laugh. And yeah, he's a fun guy. I like having a bit of a fun night with friends, you know, a couple of drinks and that. Stace don't drink, so um, like I'll have a drink if we go see our friends and things like that. Are you trouble, Zach? Sorry? Are you trouble? That's my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am trouble. Unless you do. So do you have any control over um, which altar is in charge? It's like you're all trying to get through the same door um, and it's just whoever can push through the door the door the fastest is whoever gets to come forward. If it, if we've got loads of stuff that Stace needs to do, then she'll uh, go about doing her stuff. But if it's things like picking up tablets or whatever, then I'll do it. Or if it's a lot of driving, I'll do it. Do you like Stacey? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you like all the other alters in the system? I've got a bit of a... I'm trying, trying to like them because I've been told I've got to like them in order for us to uh, progress. Um, but uh, Bick and Rob, I'm a bit not fans of, to be honest. I don't get on particularly well with Rob and Bick, but they're all there for a reason, and they're all there in some way to protect Stacey. I had a bust up actually with Rob a couple of weeks ago. Um, we had a bit of a fallout, and uh, he ended up, he actually gave me a black eye, but it's gone now. <laughs> We had an argument. Uh, Stacey could just hear it, she couldn't actually see it. And me and Rob ended up having a fight with each other. And that's how I got a black eye. Obviously, it's internal. And you're the one that got the black eye? Yeah. <laughs> Have you still got the black eye? It's, it's actually gone now, because this was a couple of weeks back, thank God. It feels to me like it's a lot for you to deal with when you're actually after a relationship. It is, yeah. but. He is part of the system. I just help. I do. I do what I, what needs to be done to keep everybody safe. I think a lot of people might wonder why do you put up with it. Because I love them all so much. They're, they're worth it for all the other times. You don't. Different alters in Kai and Franz's systems not only have different tastes, but also very different skills. And it can cause chaos if the right alter for the job isn't around. Hey, yeah, you're right, I'm Quinn. Um, I don't know how to cook anything. <laughs> like, unfortunately, it wasn't a skill that I came along with. This is stressful. It really is stressful. It's stressful watching me. Um, I'm Alfie, I'm 13, and I am a boy. So is there anything in there that you can cook? I can't cook, so no. I rely on everyone else to cook. Can you cook? I can sort of cook, I'm not very good at it. You're not cooking, you're only 13. And... <laughs> I don't want to be poisoned on camera, thanks. <laughs> no. But we're both trying to find someone that can come out that can cook something. <laughs> But it's going really badly. I don't. I don't know what to do. Um... And you can see if Theo will come out. And are you okay with him cooking? I am, but I don't want him coming out if he's going to be stressed, and he is going to be stressed. You're right, mate. 
getting really hungry and my tummy's making noises now. <laughs> What's the longest this has ever gone on for both of you where you've not eaten because of your ulcers? Um, I think it's gone on for more than a day before. We try not to let it happen, but... Why don't we both try find someone? And then... <laughs> It'll be a race. Yeah, and if it comes out at the same time, they can tag team, it's fine. That's my stomach. <laughs> I'm really hungry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark, who are you? I'm Theo, I'm 15, I'm a boy. It's great, we like, we both switched out pretty much at the same time, with the same goal in mind of just like sorting the food out. Hi. Hi. Who are you? Zemo. Hi. Demo. I'm making a marinade for the salmon. I'm one of the chefs of the system. So, Demo, you're here now. Yep. What do you remember of 10 minutes ago when you couldn't cook, the two of you? Um, I don't remember anything. I was literally not out. I know that. Um... So you don't remember Alfie being here? And uh, you don't remember Quinn? I missed Alfie. What about, can you just tell me about the memory consequences of switching? It, it can get quite difficult. You've got to make sure that the person that was out before you um, has told you things, if they can. Otherwise, nothing makes sense ever. Imagine you're like running a relay race and someone just like runs past you, hands you a baton and you're just like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with this. Yeah. Am I running this race? What race am I running? Where am I? Each of Kai and Franz's alters has their own memories, which makes any kind of normality difficult and some things almost impossible. If the alters don't share memories, how can you hold down a job? Uh, like for us, currently we, we can't, like... Do you want to work? Yeah, oh god, we would love to work. We tried to do a trial shift last year. It was a waiter kind of thing. And obviously you've got to then remember orders. You've got to remember which orders go to what thing, what dishes, what. And it was just so, like, it was probably one of the worst jobs we could have chosen to apply for. We are almost there. I just got to flip this back over. Oh, that bit's so much. I'm <laughs> so excited for food. You've got there in the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, I wish this wasn't like a regular occurrence, but this happens all the time. Like... Despite having many alters, Jade finds it difficult to share them with anyone else. In terms of DID, it's only online really that I'm open to people because I've found people that have the same disorder as me and understand it on a level that people don't really get. I don't have that many friends just because it's such an effort to keep up the, the facade of like being one all the time and um, I don't know, it's just tricky, like people seem to come in and out of my life quite often, um, but they very rarely stay. I used to feel really ashamed of it, like it was something that I had to hide and no one could find out no matter what. And it wasn't until recently I kind of went, you know what, actually it's nothing to be ashamed of and people shouldn't be scared of this and I shouldn't be scared of this. Jade even struggled to reveal her DID to her family. Um, yeah, family members, it's a tricky one because I never really understood it enough to put it in their terms of what was going on. It's difficult to open up to them when they've seen me my whole life as this one person to then say, actually, what you remember there is actually an alter is kind of difficult. No one really knows what to say next. My mum, she tries to understand, but I haven't been open with her and expressed my alters to her and sat her down and gone, these are who lives in me kind of thing. I'd like to be a lot more open about it. Um, so hopefully one day I'll get there where she understands who the alters are, who's with her, when I'm with her kind of thing. Um, and have a deeper understanding of it, but we're just not there yet. To have someone that understands it in my personal life would mean a lot.
It's often hard for people with DID to be open about their condition. So a walk on the beach is one place Kai and Franz can be themselves. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm bubble wrapped in seaweed. Yeah, um, Zach. Zach is very excited about the seaweed, so it, it makes crunchy popping noises like bubble wrap, so. Oh, that was a nice bit. I think he's determined to probably get every single bit of seaweed. That will take just... too many hours. You'd still happily do it. That's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's our biggest worry when he's out is just how other people will see him because the last thing we want is for him to be upset or even triggered with his PTSD. Said Zach loves Elliot Ike Haggis. <laughs> With alters formed in childhood, each personality has unique <laughs> histories and backgrounds built over time. I was brought up on the beach at home, so like in Newcastle, and I always used to go there with my, um, with my mother. So I did. That's why I didn't know Barry had a beach. So I was like, oh, wow. You should have told us. I, I'm pretty sure we have told you that Barry has a beach. You should have told us multiple times. I've got dissociative amnesia. <laughs> enjoyable you know as I think as long as as long as people don't judge it you know if, if people started getting nasty or made weird comments or started laughing at us then we'd you know probably stop and you know try and act like more responsible adults I suppose but um, I think because no, no one's making a big deal out of it so you know he can he can act like the 14 year old that he is <laughs> did that not go to plan? No. <laughs> it did not. But the good thing about sand art is you can go pretend it never happened. Hi, uh, Stacey. Hello, Stacey. With the potential to switch at any time and become a different person, tasks many of us take for granted are far more complex for Stacey. Just take the ends off then. So why does Nick cut your hair? Um, <laughs> bluntly, because um, going to the hairdressers is one complicated. If I had a change, then they might say, oh, we'll just shave it all off. The hairdresser might not notice. They'll just go get the razor and just go, meow. Whereas if she knows if anybody here said, shave it all off, she'd be like... <laughs> I'd be like, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think That's so. That's not a good idea. Because I've got Nick there, she knows um, all of them. So if someone else did come out, then she'd either carry on doing the cut that she's doing, or if they asked for something different, then she'd know not to, not to cut it. Um, and then I cut hers in return as well. Although Sammy cut, cut yours. Sammy has crazy. cut mine, yeah. She's only six and she's cut my hair before. <laughs> you started off doing it. I started cutting her hair. <laughs> and then midway through, it wasn't me anymore. I'd have rather <laughs> she didn't, but then Nick wasn't bothered. So I was like, OK, you're all right about it. Are you embarrassed of your DID? Yeah. It's people not understanding. So, um, you know, people watch movies or stuff that they've seen on TV and they seem to get this idea that people with um, DID could be aggressive or like violent and stuff, which it just doesn't happen. So, but for some reason Hollywood thinks it does. Because of movies like that, I feel even more like I can't tell anybody about it. And that adds to the stigma. I would love to just be able to go out, do my life, as uh, open as I can be because holding, holding the altars back actually gives me pain in my head. I'd like to get to a point where they could be them and I could be me and we can just live coexistingly quite happy. Yeah. yeah, I don't like the fact that they have to hide who they are and try to pretend to be Stacey because they're there to help her. So I think it 
should be right that they can be who they are. It's almost like living two completely different lives um, and it makes life really, really complicated, but... Jade suffers from dissociative identity disorder and today is a big day. Still quite a lot of people here though, isn't it, for the time? After a lifetime of hiding her multiple personalities, she's been building up to finally revealing one to her mum. It's starting to pack up soon. Give it another ten minutes. Start packing up, yeah? Yeah. Can I ask who I'm speaking to? You can, but the answer will probably be Jade, even if it wasn't. <laughs> Tell me why. Just because I'm not so open around my family, so it'd be awkward if I said it wasn't me. She's told me about her alters for a while, um, but I haven't been able to... She says she doesn't feel comfortable letting them out to me. I did hear one on, on the telephone one day. She... she <laughs> Um, she was acting like a child on the phone. She made the excuse that she'd had a few to drink and she was in a giggly mood. But when I spoke to her the next day, she said, oh, I'm ever so sorry, Mum. She said, one of my alters came out. I said, it was nice to hear you laugh like that. That is about the only time. I've never seen any of it. She won't let them out. I'm trying my best to be open about it. Um, it's just odd because I've spent my whole life not being open about it. So then trying to explain it to someone is difficult because I don't know what to say or how people's reactions are going to be. So I don't want to always be in the closet about it. I would like the people around me to know about it. Back at her mum's house, Jade hopes to reveal an altar in a more private setting. I've only really actually seen DID on television programmes and that. Yeah. And when I've said to you, oh, it's, is that what it's like with you? You've turned around and said, no, they've completely blown it all out of proportion. Yeah. It's nothing like that whatsoever. I've just left it at that because you've always kept me at arm's length. Mm. I think if I was a lot younger and I got diagnosed, then I think, yes, I'd be more open about it. Whereas now, because I've hidden it for so long, it's harder to be open about it. I think it was easier to hide them from everyone, including my mum. Um, and then that's just become a habit. When I'm alone, they get to be themselves because no one's around to kind of judge it or um, like question it. Because even though I know you've got them, you're still Jade. Mm. And if they could pop out now and again without me knowing, to me, that's Jade. Yeah. That's you. Mm. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Mm. I was quite happy to talk to my mum about the idea that actually her meeting an altar felt a bit too much. Jade is who she is, and when she wants me to meet one of her others, she'll let me know. I was anxious about it, but for some of the other altars, they felt that now wasn't the best time to do that, and maybe in the future, but not right now. I hope that one day she feels comfortable to do that, but if that day never comes, then it won't be something I hold against her. Not at all. Because DID is the result of trauma, learning to process past events can help manage the disorder. Uh, we are going to therapy for the first time, which we're extremely anxious about. It's always really nerve-wracking to meet someone that's gonna help you process a hell of a lot of stuff that happened in our childhood. Because the ID is, you know, it's created through trauma. 
then therapy is pretty much the only way for most DID systems to be able to move forward. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on the therapy going well. Today, Franz is meeting a new therapist for the first time, and it's vital all of her alters like him. If Zach was out and he doesn't like the therapist, that could be really bad. Um, you know, Zach has in the past threatened suicide if they go to therapy. So if it hasn't gone well, then I guess we'll have to wait and see. Hello, is that friends? Yes, we do. There's a thing. <laughs> Hello. Hello, you. Hello, how are you doing? You're good. How did it go? It actually went really well, like you said. Um, I'd like to work with you as a team. Both of us as a team. All of you and me as a team. <laughs> That's good. And I was just sort of like, <laughs> yes, I love that. <laughs> I was, ah. <laughs> it's so lovely. It, you know, he, it was quite odd. He had a little desk and yeah. the main light wasn't on. And he had a little desk lamp and his room was painted red. So it was a bit eerie. And he had guitars everywhere, and I was like, ooh, no, we'll no. get along with Damon. <laughs> oh, he plays guitar, does he? Yes. Like, uh, how does everyone else feel about him that you know of? Zach, actually, Zach is a lot more relaxed. Oh, I know. I can breathe. I know. I am relaxed. I'm so happy. I know. I'm super happy, like. <laughs> <laughs> well. And this time you actually let other people be around to judge it as well. Our goal is to just, just get to a point where we all work together, we all function happily, we all get, get along. If we can learn to coexist with each other, then um, why not if we're not causing any harm? Jade, too, is learning to love her alters. It's all I've known, and I think if it one day disappeared, I would feel a bit lost without it. I think it would be a very strange world to live in. I'm so used to things being like this. For, for there to be loads of people in this body, and it's just constant noise. I can't imagine a situation where it would just be one person. Like, to me, that must be really boring and lonely. 